What's up guys? Welcome back to Dude Ranch DIY. My name is Jake and this is my new Balmalite mini skid steer. All right, so now that we got the machine down off the back of the hook lift truck, I just want to address the elephant in the room right from the get-go. Yes, Bomalite did send me this machine for free. They sent it to me for testing purposes and to get my honest opinion on it. I will have it for a minimum of two years, and it is my intention to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly about this machine. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I have you know every right to do so, um, and that is my intention moving forward. I'm gonna tell you what I like, I'm gonna tell you what I don't like, and things that I think could be improved over the next two years while I have this machine. They did send me some attachments with it and more are on the way and we will address those in a little bit. So as you can see here, Blomalite takes extreme pride, I can tell, in the way that they package their equipment. Um, this crate is super impressive. Um, the plastic on it is super thick. It's almost like heat shrink. I think it is heat shrink, like almost like you would wrap a boat with. They have their name on all four sides of it. Big, heavy duty metal strapping here. Um, this crate is not, you know, just thrown together. You can even see they have lower bottom metal corner bracket supports. Um, so this is shipped really nice. Now this machine did come from Canada, as did uh, the grapple and bucket up on the top there as well. There might even be some pallet forks thrown in there. Um, so without much more talking, let's get this thing uncrated and down on the ground so we can take a look at it a little bit better. I guess I gotta take these off the top first. Let me grab the tractor. Okay, we got the attachments off the top and what we have here so far is a log grapple there you can kind of see from martach a bucket a smooth edge grading bucket and some pallet forks that are i believe 42 inches long so now that we got those off the top you can see we got instruction manual there there is a key hiding up in there um now this whole pallet looks like was nailed together um there's an awful lot of nails in there, kind of like I said. So uh, let's try and bust this thing out. Good push, push. Very oh, good. God. Push. There we go. I 
guess there's like an operator presence switch because uh, once I stepped on the platform, all hydraulics kicked into action. Well, that was easy. Slight learning curve. I'm not really sure how else to get this thing off of here except to drive it off. So, I guess here we go. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. This thing is just. This thing is just driving on its own. I think I got myself into a bit of a pickle here. Uh, I didn't realize, but the ground clearance in the back is higher than the distance of the tracks, you know, to the back platform. So. You have to figure something out here. Maybe uh, now I have enough traction to get off. Nope. Okay, I think we should be good now. And off the hang up. There we go. Now, before I had said something about it just traveling forward on its own, uh, I think, I don't know what that was attributed to, but uh, it seems to be fine now. Well guys, I'm gonna be honest, that didn't go exactly to plan, but you know, we're keeping it real here at Dude Ranch DIY and whatever does go perfectly. Um, so let's take a look at this Baumolite mini skid steer a little closer. So Baumolite, for those of you that don't know, is a attachment and mini skid steer company out of Canada. This is their TRL 620D mini skid steer. They offer a couple different versions of this. This one has a 25 horsepower Kubota diesel. I believe they also offer a model that has a Yanmar as well as two smaller models that instead of tracks have wheels and um, are a little bit less powerful and they might even be gas powered, but don't quote me on that. Um, this machine is the largest one that they offer. It comes in at around 3000 pounds. And um, as you can see, it's on tracks. It has the standard mini skid steer quick attach plate, comes with hydraulic auxiliary hookups as well as a case drain. And it has two light bars on the front, which I'm super happy to see because if you guys have been following along on the channel for a while, I had a Cormidi mini skid steer, which did not have any lights, which was kind of disappointing. Um, another quick big difference I'm seeing here between this one and the other machine that I had at one point is that there's a nice big operator station uh, with bolsters, both pads on the front and sides, um, which I already found out this is a spring uh, you know, operator platform that must also have an operator presence switch in, in there um, to indicate when an operator is on. Otherwise, it seemed as if the machine could be on, but all the hydraulics would be locked up uh, again this is the first time i'm seeing this obviously so as you can see we have a nice new digital display here i was told that the older ones didn't have a digital screen um, i think this digital screen can basically tell you all of the uh, statistics and analytics and stuff of the machine you know from engine rpm to maybe even service intervals we have two switches for the lights parking switch nice thing here 12, 12 volt cigarette outlet to you know charge your phone or something. Um, it looks like we have a rabbit mode, a turtle mode, auto, stop, run. Not sure what the auto mode is, but I'm sure we will figure it out. Then we have our engine RPM, I'm guessing. And then I believe this is the 
lever for the auxiliary. It looks like there's like a neutral off, a forward, and reverse. So we'll have to see how that works with the grapple. This joystick controls the tracks. This joystick controls the loader. Diesel, hydraulic fluid, which actually pretty nice. It has this, you know, this guard on it um, so that, you know, you can't just accidentally put diesel fuel in there because they are kind of each, you know, albeit on opposite sides of the machine, they look pretty similar. So if you have employees or something running it, that makes it a little bit harder for them to put the wrong fluid in the wrong tank. Um, they did ship it with just a tiny bit of fuel, but it's not even registering here on the fuel gauge. But that is nice that it has a fuel gauge there. Um, it looks like the radiator is up here on the top, which is nice, out of the way. Um, chances of that getting punctured or something are, are pretty slim, you know, with brush and stuff. And it has a nice, heavy-duty steel expanded metal grate there. You can see we already knocked the new off of it, which is great from the pallet. Got a couple scratches on that upper light there. And like I said, I really like how there's a lower light there, kind of almost angled down towards where your implement would be. Looks like we got spring track tensioning in there. Um, so I'm guessing that that means that it's, it is not grease actuated, but there's probably an adjustment rod with a nut or something to tension up the tracks. So that's actually kind of nice. You know, you don't have to travel around with tubes of grease just in case you pop a track off, all you probably need is a couple wrenches or something. But we can get into that further. Got the hydraulic fluid reservoir, nice big display there so you can see your levels. And yeah, I mean, I think that is pretty much it for right now. Oh, I'm just coming across right here. It looks like there might be a little storage cubby there or something, let's see. I like that they have these big star, like hand, hand crank nuts. Oh. Yeah, would you look at that? Got a couple extra fuses, another uh, hand crank nut. That's like a nice little cubby to, I guess, keep extra parts and stuff, which obviously they thought of. Okay, so after leafing through the instruction manual briefly, um, I kind of figured out what everything was. I also figured out what these were. I think they were, you know, they're like toe points or pull points, um, and that's what those six bolts were for. Um, I am missing, after further inspection, one of these bolts to hold on this plate here. So I'm gonna have to run to the hardware store to get that so that it doesn't rattle around. But we're gonna have to go up to the garage and tighten these things up. Upon further inspection and reading of the manual, this is your secondary fuel gauge, I believe. Um, there's like a little filter there and a fuel line and a shutoff valve at the bottom of the tank. And I don't know if you could tell, but that's like reddish looking uh, fuel. And I believe that is just a continuation of this whole thing, which is the fuel tank. I just thought it was this upper part, but I guess it continues to go down. So that is a nice big fuel tank. I'm curious to see how much that actually holds, um, but I'm guessing that is what that is. So. I'm going to, I'm most excited to try out this grapple because I've never tried out a grapple of this style before. It does have this really nice like spring-loaded hose hanger that looks as if it mounts to right there. So I'm gonna throw this grapple on the front end of the machine and since it needs some wrenching done and the machine needs some wrenching done on it, we're going to take it up to the garage, get everything tightened up and then uh, try picking up some logs with it. Lord knows we got a nice pile. What's up guys? Lou, Gus, Mom? How was the park, Lou? Did you have fun? Did you have fun at the park? Huh? Oh, yeah. What about you, Gus? Did you have fun at the park? Oh, yes. How was it? Beautiful day today. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's so nice out. What's this? What do you think? It looks cool. Well, you can, like walk, you can walk up closer. It's not going to bite you. I like the color. You like the color? Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like a caterpillar yellow. You stand on this? Yeah, you stand on there. Oh, you look good. It's the perfect size for you. Maybe I'll have to take it for a spin. Yeah, we'll have to get you running this thing. Yeah. I'm just tightening up so, some loose bolts and uh, getting the grapple going here. So you used it? It works? I drove it up here. I haven't really used it yet. We had a, a little bit of trouble getting it off the back of the <laughs> flatbed. Uh, I got it stuck, but uh, we got it. Okay. So we're making progress. Cool. Well, I can't wait to see it in action. 
Yeah, pretty cool, right? Yeah. Okay, we got the grapple on finally. Uh, the lines had been heating up, so there was a bunch of built up pressure in there. So once I finally got that relieved, I was able to get the lines hooked up onto the machine. Um, now this is the Martach uh, log grapple here. This thing is pretty cool. I'm interested to see how it works. It looks like they got kind of like a bolt-on piece there to make it all, you know, one flat piece in the front, but it, it seems as if we could take that off if we wanted to. I got this line razor thing, whatever you want to call this, to keep the lines up out of the way installed. Now the lines on it are pretty long. We'll have to see uh, what, you know, how that works in everyday use. You know, they're they're up kind of out of the way. I think that just accounts for the full curl down of the grapple. But uh, let's open and close this thing. Now because this lever does stay in place, you'll notice you can hear the motor bogging down. That's one thing right off the bat uh, that I don't like. I think it would be nice if there were two different auxiliary circuits. One for continuous flow, like a mower or something where you just want it on. And then something like a grapple where it always returns to center. Uh, but we'll, I'm sure we'll get used to that over time. Oh, see? We just stalled the motor. One thing I did uh, realize on this thing is that it says press auto to arm system. So when I hit the auto button here, it says system ready to start, wait for start signals. I can hit the run button and you'll see start engine, preheating three, two, one and it automatically starts up on its own. So that's like a little safety way for it to ensure that the glow plugs are always getting used, which is nice. So now that we got the grapple kind of figured out, uh, we can run to the hardware store and get that last bolt for this plate right over here. I also went ahead and did some very important Dude Ranch DIY branding on here. After all, if this thing is on the back of the international flatbed or on my equipment trailer driving down the road and people are interested in it, they gotta know where they can see some videos on it. So hopefully that will help draw some nice viewers and uh, potential new clients for Balmalite as we test out this here machine on the channel for the foreseeable future. So here we have all the panels off on the back and the front radiator lifted up and out of the way. So I just wanna show you how easily accessible everything is here. Um, this is really nice that it's, they make it, you know, you don't need any tools. You just have these big star like hand bolts here. Um, so here you got your hydraulic filter, your battery, your two drive motors. It looks like pretty much all the hydraulic uh, valving and everything is right here. And they even have labels in there saying what everything is, which is, you know, really nice. That's kind of above and beyond, and it's all, you know, fairly organized back here. So that is a huge bonus for this machine. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show you that I just noticed is right here, there's kind of like an informational tag, Balmalite TRL620D. The unit weight is 2,930 pounds without the weight kit, which uh, I do not have yet. 24.8 gross Kubota uh, horsepower, hydrostatic drive, 10.5 gallons per minute. Tipping weight using the front edge of the bucket is 1,290 pounds. So that's the tipping weight at the very front of the bucket. Not necessarily indicative of its operating weight or lift capacity, but we can get into that later. Moving over here towards the front of the vehicle, you see the whole radiator assembly and cooling system lifts up out of place with a really nice gas shock that they have there. And then to lock it up, you have a pin that you put in right here, and it even has a handy little keeper spot for the pin when not in use. Looking down in here, you have your 
awesome Kubota D1105, little three-cylinder diesel. Everything nice and easily accessible. We have our oil check right here, our dipstick. Um, we got our alternator right over there. More hydraulic cooling. We got our coolant for the motor. Easily accessible up to the backside of the control panel up there. And then down here, it looks as if we have uh, really just like the motor and maybe another, that might be the hydraulic filter or the, I'm guessing that's probably the fuel filter actually, looking at it. Um, to get down into that, we could lift up the arms and then you do have to take off a couple bolts to, to access that hatch down there underneath that panel. But for the most part, all of your service issues or all of your service, you know, things that you, you need to, easily get to are easily accessible by without any tools and by just unscrewing those star nuts there um, we have our air filter right here nice easy accessible you can see when you need to clean out that kind of like pre cleaner you know filter thing um, I know our chipper has that and it's nice you know you can see that it gathers all the particulate you just unscrew that wing nut on the top dump it out and knock out the filter and you're good to go so i'm gonna get this thing all knocked back down and put together and we're gonna go try out this grapple here i'm super excited all right we're over here at neighbor sean's he wanted to check out the new machine him and his son ryan ryan has a youtube channel that focuses on sweet diesel trucks what's the name of your channel ryan ryan s 5757 ryan s 5757 i'll put a link down below yep. But uh, you can check out all these sweet vehicles on his channel. But uh, Sean's trying out the new Bombalite here. Is he gonna pick up this car? Go ahead. I don't know what his intention is here. Starting to starting to pull up off the ground a bit. What if you come from the back? That's nice. Give it some gas, princess. <laughs> oh yeah, we are off the ground. Picking up the whole rear end. We'll, we'll keep going up. Well, there we go. <laughs> what goes up must come down. Now it's a low rider. <laughs> everybody you like it? Yeah. everybody needs one of these yeah. all right guys so 
Now that we've had a little bit of fun and we've proven that the Bombalite can pick up an old Ford Galaxy completely off the ground, at least it's a uh, its whole rear end, um, I think we should try out this Martach Grapple in a little bit more of a Dude Ranch DIY fashion. Okay, so obviously the machine picked it up and was able to move it a little bit, but as you can tell, as soon as I stepped off the back and even when I lifted it up a little bit off the ground, like one or two feet, it started to tip forward, which is to be expected of a machine this size. But clearly it had the power to move it, it just doesn't have the ballast and counterweight, which is why I'm waiting on the, the counterweight kit that comes from Bomalite. They're gonna be shipping me that hopefully soon within the next couple of weeks, which should add a couple extra hundred pounds. But just for reference, this is a big ash log. So I'm gonna take some measurements and do some calculations on the online wood weight calculator to let you know just how much weight this log weighs. So. So as you saw right there, it just picked up over 1,800 pounds. Granted, it was having, it didn't have any trouble picking it up. The, the only issue was obviously the counterweight and the fact that I'm not fat enough to uh, act as a larger counterweight. But that is some serious weight. You know, that is well over half the weight of this total machine. The machine only weighs 2,930 pounds as is. So that's super impressive. Uh, let me throw on the pallet forks now and we will go and try and lift up a couple different totes. Guys, that is super impressive. That is a full large tote of ash. Granted, it is ash, so it is lighter. That is full lift height. Full lift capacity all the way up. I No operator, obviously acting as counterweight. So that is pretty awesome.
Okay, so it wasn't happy with the full oak tote, which was that one right there. That was all green oak. This is an oak maple beech tote, which is still pretty heavy wood. It's all green. It was just split in February of this year. And again, that is full lift height, large tote, one third of a cord with the Baumalite TRL 620D mini skid steer. This thing is impressing me so far. Again, you'll note it does not have the counterweight kit yet on the back. Granted, I do have the tote tipped back, but that is well above any standard pickup truck height or, you know, dock height of a semi truck or, or, or something like that. So that is pretty impressive. Let's see if we can get it down nice, slowly and safely. All right, guys, I think that's gonna about wrap up this video here, at least the initial video on the new Baumalite TRL 620D mini skid steer. Um, this thing is impressive so far. I, I gotta say, I am, I am really impressed. It, overall, I think it's a little bit smaller than the other mini skid steer I had previously, just like footprint wise, but don't let its size fool you. This thing packs a punch from lifting up the back end of an old school car to picking up a log that was just over 1,800 pounds to lifting up two large totes filled with hardwood all the way up to its full lift capacity, one of which being green. I know it didn't pick up the oak tote, and I really honestly just think the only reason it didn't pick it up was because of the lack of counterweight. Um, if I had Chris here, this thing has all the hydraulic pressure and, and strength in the world to have picked up that tote. The, the one downfall is its lack of counterweight at this time. So if I had Chris here standing on the back of the platform with me, um, I think we would have been able to pick that up no problem. So we'll have to try that out in a future video. But just initial first impressions, I am very impressed with just the machine overall, its build quality, the some thoughtful attention to detail um, you know features on this thing that I pointed out throughout the video that I really like um, so I am very happy that I entered into this you know agreement um, with Baumalite as I said in the beginning of the video I'm gonna have this machine for about two years potentially longer um, so we are gonna get into a ton of different projects using this both here around my property out on clients property doing tree work so let me know in the comments below if there's anything in specific that you would like to see this thing do as i said i have some more attachments on the way those will kind of be a surprise for you guys um, i'm really looking forward to getting those things some of which are very unique and uh you know never before seen types of attachments so there is a lot in store and we this is just the tip of the iceberg so if you guys are interested in this kind of stuff and, and want to see more, go check out Baumalite.com. I will put a link to their description. If, if these grapples and pallet forks and bucket and stuff like that interest you, go check out Martach. I will also put a link to them down in the description. Not only do they make mini skid steer attachments, they also make full-size skid steer and tractor attachments as well. Their list of, of attachments is pretty, pretty darn impressive. So go check out the two websites, links down in the description. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button down below to be sure to see all the rest of the future content that we're gonna come out with this thing. Questions, comments, feedback, put it down in that comment section. But for now, I'm Jake, this is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here next time.